everybody. Back again for our read aloud here in a different room so you got some more light on the subject. Hope you have been reading our chapters one through four from last week from No Talking by Andrew Clements. Today we're going to read chapters five and six and start off with those for the beginning of the week. So let's get started. Here we go. So chapter five is the contest. Lindsay narrowed her eyes and hissed, you take that back. Dave sh shrugged, take what back? That girls are big blabberheads all the time? No way, because they are. Everybody knows that. It's a shame to have to report this, but Dave actually believed what he was saying. And in his ignorant but creative young mind, an idea sparked to life. Before Lindsay or any of her friends could say something back, Dave said, and there's a way to prove that girls talk way more than boys, unless you're afraid of some competition, you and your noisy friends. Afraid, Lindsay said, looking around at the girls. We're not afraid of anything, except catching whatever made, made you so stupid. The girls giggled, but Dave ignored the insult, completely caught up in his new idea. He waved his hands to quiet them down. Okay, here's the deal. A whole day of no talking at school. Not in class, not in the halls, not on the playground, nowhere. No talking at all. And it's a contest. Boys against girls. Whichever side talks less wins. Lindsay made a face. No talking at school? That's impossible. Dave had an advantage here. He had just spent almost four hours without saying a word at school. So he had some experience and he felt like he knew what he was talking about. He grinned and said, Maybe it's impossible for a girl to be quiet, but I bet the boys can do it. Or, at least, we can do it better than the girls. Lindsay said, but, like, what if a teacher looked right at you and asked you a question? Then what? Dave grinned and said, you could always cough. Lindsay's mouth dropped open, and then she glared at him. You do that coughing in, the social, in social studies on purpose? You are so immature. Dave shrugged. It was sort of a test, and it worked. But if every kid in fifth grade coughed every time a teacher asked a question, that would not work. Lindsay sniffed. <sighs> well, I say this whole idea is childish. Silly and childish. It's okay if you don't want to, Dave said. It's just an idea. I mean, I can see why you'd be afraid, since you're a girl and all. And since you have to talk every other second, no problem. Sorry I interrupted you. You just keep talking to your friends there. You were talking about something important. Weren't you that special sweater, right? Go ahead. Talk. You girls go on and talk and talk and talk all you want to. Lindsay pressed her lips together and glared at Dave. Her eyes narrowed the slits. You are the most annoying little... She stopped mid-insult and folded her arms. All right. She said, let's work out the rules right now. If a teacher talks to you, then what? You answer, said Dave. How many words can you use? She said. Dave smiled. Let's make it ten words in case you and your friends need to tell the teacher about some new clothes you got. Stop trying to be funny because you're not, Lindsay said. Let's limit, let's make the limit four words. If you answer with more than four in a row, the extras count. Dave shook his head. Four is still too easy. Let's make it a three-word limit. And every legal word is one point against your team. Duh, Lindsay said. Like I need you to explain that. So it's a three-word limit, Dave said. Three, said Lindsay. And you can answer teachers or the principal or any grown-up at school, Dave said. Like the custodian or the nurse, added Lindsay, because she wasn't about to let Dave Packer have the last word about anything. What about contractions, she said. What about them, Dave said. Does a contraction count as one word or two? Dave didn't let it show on his face, but he was impressed by Lindsay's question. That she was able to think so far ahead and figure out that words like won't and isn't could cause a sporky boom problem. And right away, Dave was just as impressed with himself because he understood how to answer her question with a question of his own. He said, if you go find the dictionary, can you look up the word won't? Lindsay nodded. Of course you can. Then it's a word. 
one word, say dead, say day, any other questions? And now it was Lindsay's turn to hide her thoughts because she was impressed with Dave's answer. He was still very annoying, but his answer seemed right. Plus, he'd explained his reasoning clearly. But she didn't get carried away with good feelings about Dave. He was still the miserable, unpleasant boy who was forcing her to get involved in a pointless contest. It's also a shame to have to report this, but Lindsay was just as proud and stubborn as Dave. And since he had pushed her into this fight, she felt it was her duty to push back, and she saw the perfect way to do it. She turned away, and she whispered something to the girls at her lunch table, and then they all nodded their heads, and she turned back to Dave. She gestured towards her friends and said, We want to make this contest harder. How about this? No talking at home, either, or on the bus, or anywhere else. No talking at all, except for the what we already decided, not even to parents. And let's make the contest last for two days instead of one. Two 24-hour days in a row, unless you think that's too hard. Dave shrugged, fine, no problem, except how do we keep track of all of the mess-ups when you and your friends start gabbing at home? You mean when the boys cheat, said Lindsay? Simple, we'll have to use the honor system. When we're not at school, it's the only way. We'll all keep track of our own mistakes and report them, honestly. Except I don't know if the boys can be trusted. Have any boys ever heard of the honor system? I know you can't. I know I can trust the girls. Don't worry about us, Dave said. Lindsay tossed her head. So when does the contest start? The girls can be ready by tomorrow at lunchtime, unless that's too soon for the boys. Do you need more time to get organized, like a week or, or two weeks? Very funny, said Dave. We'll start Tuesday, tomorrow, at the beginning of lunch. And it's not over until Thursday. How about 12.15? That'll be the middle of lunch period. Lindsay nodded, and Dave went on. I'll be the official scorekeeper for our side, and you keep track of the girls. And no cheating, okay? Lindsay nodded again. Agreed. She held out her hand. Dave looked at it like it was covered with slime. What? He said. Lindsay wrinkled her nose. It's revolting, but we have to shake on it so you won't try to back out. Dave shook, and then made a show of wiping his hands on his pants, which got a big laugh from five or six other boys who witnessed the ceremony. And as Dave turned and went into a huddle with the guys at his lunch table, Lindsay did the same with the girls at her table. The contest was on. We've come to a big part in our story. Exciting, here we go. So now we're on chapter six. Chapter six is teamwork. The boys Dave ate lunch with were his best friends. He looked around at them. He grinned after he explained the rules. Cool contest, huh? Todd shook his head. I'm not doing this. It's dumb. Who wants to not talk? Besides, it's impossible, like she said. You think girls can stop talking, but boys can't? Dave asked. So you're just going to give up without a fight? Is that it? Dave said, well, no, It's, but it's still a stupid idea. So what? said Dave. It's a contest, and the boys are gonna win it, okay? So listen, first, we've got to tell every guy. Everybody has to be with us on this. Tim Flanagan was absent in homeroom this morning. I'll call him in case he's coming back tomorrow, and you have to figure, you all have to do that too. Figure out who else isn't here. And if you don't have a number, call me tonight because my mom has a school directory. And every fifth grade boy who's here at school has to be told today, okay? Jason said, but re really? Not talking for two days? Like, how? Dave pulled an index card out of his pocket. On the back was his re India report. He wrote the word easy. He held it up, showing it to all the boys. And then he said, did I just talk? No, said Jason. Dave said, keep watching. He shook his head. Then he nodded at them. Then he smiled, and then he frowned and showed his teeth, growling like a dog. I didn't talk, right? But you got what I said. Not talking just means not talking. It'll probably be fun, and but even if it's not, it's a contest against the girls, and we're going to win this, right? And tell all the guys to practice short sentences, three words or less. Jim said, you bug me. Jason said, your breath smells. Richard said, look. It's Batman. Hey, 
Is Batman one word or two? And the sentences kept coming, each boy trying to be the goofiest. Guys, Dave said, guys, come on. We've only got 14 minutes left before our next period. All the fifth grade boys are right here at lunch. It's a perfect chance to tell everyone, and I hate to tell you, but the girls are already ahead of us. The boys hushed and looked around. Lindsay, Anna, Emily, Tart, Taryn, and all of the friends who had been sitting at the next table were fanning out through the cafeteria, talking to every girl in sight. And Hannah and Karen were heading for the door to the playground. Dave said, everybody know what we have to say to our team? The boys looked back at him and nodded, each face deadly serious now. All right, then, said Dave. Let's do it. And that is the end of chapter six. So that's where we're going to stop. I'm going to put a few questions, just like the last two videos, for you guys to think about and talk about and go look back in our video if you need to. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I will see you later on. Bye.